Hello YouTube welcome to review and shop, today we will watch best guitar amplifiers in the market of 2020. Please subscribe to my channel and like the video. You can find the products link in the description section. Enjoy the video. We get start to list with number 5. PRS Mount 15 Mark Tremonti. Mark Tremonti is well known as an avid gearhead and first impressions of the Mount 15 are of a purposeful, working player's tool with no unnecessary bells or whistles. The Mount 15 has clean and lead foot switchable preamp channels, with gain and master volume on the lead channel, and volume on the clean channel. Both channels have their own bass, mid and treble controls with a master presence control and a pull boost on the clean channel to add a mild overdriven edge. Around the back things are kept simple with a series effects loop plus a half power switch which drops the mount 15 from 15 watts RMS down to around 7 watts. At first glance there's no channel indicator, however, when powered up all the mount 15's valves are lit by LEDs which change color, red for lead, blue for clean, very visible and very cool. The lead channel has no less than 5 gain stages and the amount of gain and distortion on tap is huge. However, it's also been carefully sculpted into a stunning barrage of harmonic filth that flatters every note and power chord. Often, very high gain can easily descend into an unpleasant mush that's perceived more as noise than music, yet the Mount 15 manages to avoid this and retains exceptional clarity and articulation. The clean channel offers plenty of headroom to cater for any guitar, while pulling the channel mid-boost function adds a sweet vintage Fender overdrive with a medium-fast response that's great for country picking or blues. Number 4. Boss Katana 100 Boss is an effects legend, but thanks to the digital expertise of parent company Roland, the brand now also has an amp that promises organic, valve-like tones at an impressively low price. It does this by using the same tube logic technology employed in last year's 150-watt Waza Craft Head, and other Roland amps. The K100 doesn't invite direct comparison with specific amp brands and models. Instead, there are five generic voices, acoustic, clean, crunch, lead, and brown. You can preload 15 different effects types into the amp, with 55 to currently choose from when you link the Katana to the Boss Tone Studio application. The Katana may look plain, but its tones are truly exceptional. The crunch voice is responsive and dynamic, while the brown solo sound is as good as many USA valve-powered competitors. Start using the Tone Studio Editor and the Katana's edge becomes sharper still, with different effects chain presets and assignable control parameters. Number 3. Mesa Boogie Mark V Based on Mesa's flagship Mark V, the Mark V, 25 head is small, perfectly formed and typical of Mesa's superlative design and attention to detail. Two independent channels, each with three very different voice presets, combine with Mesa's iconic 5-band graphic EQ for a choice of 12 sounds. You can footswitch between the channels, with the graphic on or off for quasi 4-channel operation and preset 25 or 10 watts per channel. One of the best features lives on the back panel, a cab clone speaker emulated direct output, with the speaker defeat for silent recording or practice, using the built-in headphone socket. Despite the Mark V, 25's long feature list, it's very easy to use and its tones are sensational. The rhythm channel covers the shimmering clean tones of the modern boogie and the fatter blackface inspired midrange of the fabled Mark I, while the Mark V crunch voice is so deep and three-dimensional you could record an entire album with it. The lead channel is equally inspiring, with a perfect rendition of the Mark X overdrive tone, arguably the most coveted boogie sound, along with more modern distortion effects that sound unbelievably good when tweaked with the graphic. The Mark V, 25 is one of the best small boogies we've ever heard, which means it's one of the best small amps there is. Number 2. Vox AC 15 C2 The new AC 15 twin retains the all-important dual EL84, cathode-biased output section of its forebear, but otherwise it's very different. A quick scan across the top panel reveals two inputs for independent access to either normal or top boost channels. One benefit of the bigger, 2x12 enclosure is that it provides ample room for a full-length reverb tank, housed in the bottom. There's also an inbuilt tremolo effect, with controls for depth and speed. But the whole point of this amp is the pair of 25W Celestian G12M green back speakers. They are the speaker of rock in so many cases and while purists might hope for Celestian blues, they would add a good 300 pounds at least to the price, 
and he increased power handling of two greenbacks on the end of just 15 watts is quite a tantalizing prospect. It's fair to say that even with the master volume setup, the magic doesn't really start happening until the amp's lungs are at least halfway open, but happily, that's not far from perfect for many of today's pub and bar gigs, it may even be too much for some. The AC15 twin does sound magnificent when clean, but listen carefully to those amps or this and it's rarely completely undistorted. That harmonically rich drive that was never supposed to be there is the key characteristic that latter day, non-master volume AC users find hardest to replicate. And finally number 1. Marshall JCM. The 2555X Silver Jubilee reissue has the same silver vinyl covering used on the originals, and looks just as handsome. The controls are pleasingly familiar, with a simple front panel layout featuring controls for bass, mid, treble, presence, together with a preamp gain and two master volume controls, one for a lead and one for a rhythm. A push-slash-pull switch on the output master volume changes channels, while another on the gain knob flips the 2555X into rhythm clip mode, changing the clean channel into something a lot more aggressive. The third rocker switch changes the output stage mode from pentode to triode, dropping the power from 100 down to around 50 watts, and softening the attack a little. The sparse rear panel also features a series effects loop, a fixed level frequency compensated DI output, and a jack socket for a single button foot switch, used to change channels. Overall, the 2555X is built to last and look good for a long time, with Marshall's typically high build quality and attention to detail. Apart from its association with Slash, Joe Bonamassa, and various other high-profile users, the main reason why 2555s are so sought after is their sound. We're pleased to report that the reissue amp is totally as accurate as it possibly could be, with perhaps a touch more gain and low-end punch than the original. The 2555X accurately reproduces the original tone, and with a few minor exceptions, the look, of the original, at a price that's very reasonable compared with the competition, especially for a UK-made product.